Blake is here and it's time to build a gaming PC. Oh yeah. This one is super special because we have the brand new 12900K from Intel. That's 16 cores, 24 threads, and we're pairing it with an RTX 3080 Ti. We're going to be walking you through the full build process from start to finish, and of course we're going to be showing you those all-important gameplay benchmark numbers so you know exactly how this thing performs and ultimately whether Alder Lake is worth it. A massive thank you to Deep Call for actually sponsoring this video. Let's get started. Kicking off this build, we have some brand new motherboards. These are the Z590 motherboards from Intel. MSI sent this one out. It is the brand new Unify. I think the main thing really that you do need to be aware of though, that some motherboards that to use the brand new DDR5 standard, which is going to give you faster memory speeds and faster gaming performance in certain titles. Probably not going to make too much difference at the moment, but in the future, I'm sure it will. You'll also get support for the latest PCI Generation 5 standard, which is pretty crazy, bearing in mind Gen 4 is only a couple of years old, really, or at least it's been properly supported. This isn't really going to make too much difference unless you're buying into the latest PCI Generation 5 storage, which at the time of filming, I don't think it's even on sale yet, but is very good for future-proofing. But in terms of gaming, it's probably not a must-have feature. Not at the moment, anyway. Of course, the main reason that you're probably going to be buying one of these things, though, is for this, the brand new socket. This is Intel 1700. It is perhaps a little bit confusing because it is actually a slightly larger socket this time around, which is a good thing because it means that you can get more powerful CPU. Just be aware that not all of the cooling solutions are going to fit, and the ones that do might need an adapter. This is my special edition CPU, and it comes with a plaque. Is it going to be written in broken English? Grand presents the best performance combination as media kit. I'll take that as a yes, but it's better than my Mandarin. But here it is, the i9-12900K. As I say, 16 cores, 24 threads. So you've got a mixture of efficiency cores and performance cores. They're going to do different things, which means that if you're playing games, you're not only going to get the benefits of an eight-core CPU, but you're going to have loads of efficiency cores that are going to be great for background tasks and multi-threaded applications too. I'll tell you what, we'll do a little size comparison. So here is the older generation. That is actually a fair bit smaller, isn't it? I don't know why I'm swaying, it's not exactly windy in here. But yes, definitely a bigger chip. It should be business as usual to install this, but the socket has changed slightly. It's definitely a bit more robust now. It's like a two lever system almost. It should be the same drill as always though, just gently drop the CPU into the socket. There's like a little latch thing. There we go. Boom. Slightly more complicated, but not really. It's just because I haven't done it before because this is new. Just like the setup. I know it's not looking like much at the moment, but this is the first video. Let me know your thoughts on it down in the comment section below. Do you want to see a setup tour? I know you do. A thousand likes and we'll make it happen. Next up, it's memory time and it's also time for DDR5. Exciting. This memory looks like an absolute beast. This was also supplied in the press kit that the no, I've got to do that again now because I cocked up my words. I'm ruining all my tricks. A 20 minute video doesn't take 20 minutes to make, ladies and gentlemen. This kit was also supplied in the MSI press kit that they supplied. And I will say that with DDR5, it's not necessarily going to be necessary if you just want to play games now. Because at launch, it is going to be very, very expensive. It will come down, but if you look at the history of DDR4, that was also very expensive at launch. The only thing that you've got to be aware of is that some of these motherboards will use DDR4, some will use 5, and you can't swap and interchange them if you buy a DDR5 board you can't go and put DDR4 in to save yourself some money. We've not got a Gen 5 SSD here, sorry guys, but we do have something that is almost as exciting, the Samsung 980 Pro SSD that they supplied for a sponsored video over a year ago now. Time flies when you're having fun. Which of course you always do when watching a PC-centric video, right? Right? It's great to see that more manufacturers are actually cottoning on to the idea that you do need to have double-sided heat sinks. This normally only affects SSDs that are over two terabytes in size. This one is sadly only a 500 gigabyte one, so it is a single-sided SSD, but it's still gonna help a little bit with thermal management. And with that, I do believe we have our motherboard combination all up and running. The only thing left to do is get this installed on our case and get the cooler attached. So let's park this to one side and retrieve not this. 
We have our case, or the chassis. This is actually brand new from Deepcool. This is the CG560. And Deepcool makes some really good chassis at various different price points. They're usually a little bit cheaper than the competition, but they're always pretty well made, actually, for the price. And I'm really liking what they've done with this, because not only do you have a very large tempered glass panel, so you can see everything, but they've thought about airflow a lot better than some of the other cases that I've seen from other manufacturers, because you've got plenty of airflow on the front with this sort of mesh intake, but then you also have big grills on the side as well. You can see that we do have plenty of fans already pre-routed for you. You do have a little bit of cable management here down the sides as well as some grommets so you can get a nice clean and tidy build. You do also have plenty of ventilation on the top with a removable dust filter and then if you look on the inside you do actually have three RGB fans as standard and then a single blackout 140 at the rear. Capped with thumb screws as well. So we'll lay our case down flat. We will grab our motherboard and we will begin our Alder Lake journey. For reference, I am now going to screw my motherboard, but I'm not going to show you that for obvious reasons. Because it's far too boring to watch. When you're done, it will look something along the lines of this. As I say, very jet black. The next step for me today is going to be to install our power supply. And this is also from Deepcool. This is the PM800D. This is a full-size ATX power supply. It comes in a newly branded box. And as the name would suggest, it is 800 watts. And this one is gold rated. As you can see, this is a non-modular power supply, so you are gonna have a little bit of extra cable bulk, but it is gonna save you some money. Shout out though to Deepcore, cool. I've actually made all of the cables jet black. You don't have any ketchup and mustard here, but obviously if you did wanna go for something a little bit higher end, and then they do also sell the DQ850M-V2L, which isn't such a catchy name, but this one is fully modular. Let's uncoil all of these cables and then gently drop this down into the basement of our case and then screw it into place. True story, every time I used to go to the fish and chip shop when I was young, I would always be deliberately difficult and ask for place and chips. I'm really not sure why. I think I just used to be a bit of a difficult child. My poor granddad had to wait 10 minutes for it to cook sometimes, all because of me being difficult. The reason that I'm putting the power supply in now is because I want to put this CPU connector into place before we fit our radiator because it makes it so much easier. In case you've never built a PC before, it's at the top left of the motherboard. Plug in the ATX power connection, our USB 3, HD audio, and then our front panel connections. We also have our fan connections at the top. And then if you're using the case to control the lighting, one SATA power, all connected and ready to go. Now, as we touched on earlier, when it comes to support for CPU coolers, I think a lot of them are gonna be coming soon, as soon as they release extra brackets or newer versions so that the coolers will definitely work properly with the latest generation socket, you'll have a whole bunch of choice. But to be on the safe side, today we are using the cooler that came in the MSI kit. This is their Meg Core Liquid S360 which looks very expensive. But the reason for this is because it has a very large screen on it, so you can see exactly what's going on in your system in real time without coming out of your game. Now that's what I call cool. Oh my God, look at the size of this. I did not expect that. I don't know if I've ever seen a cooler that big. That's crazy! I should also mention that these little plates come off and for some reason MSI have supplied the media with slightly different ones to the ones that you would be buying, so bear this in mind. Let's take the front off. I always assume it just comes off. One of these days I'm gonna snap it in two, but today is not that day. And then MSI have been mean and not given you enough screws to actually double mount this radiator with two sets of fans, so we're gonna use three screws rather than four. Because in theory, this should now just slot in, like so. Then we can grab our screws, thread it through the fan, and then into the radiator. Clever stuff. To get the pump head installed, it should be pretty simple. Just as usual, you get the Intel bracket, feed it through the holes at the back, grab the new Intel 1700 hardware, screw it into the motherboard. Then you can grab the pump head, Take the plastic off. I still can't get over just how huge this thing is. Then you should just gently be able to nurse this over those posts. Grab the thumb screws out of the bag. And then screw it uh, on top. I feel like I'm dying. For context, it would be really easy for me to do this normally like you would and just do this, but then you can't see what I'm doing. So I have to suffer for you. And then finally, we have the RTX 3080 Ti. 
Founders Edition. This is pretty much the most powerful gaming graphics card you can get right now. Obviously there is the RTX 3090 that is even more expensive than this, and this is hardly great value. But that card has 24 gigabytes of VRAM, which for gaming is pretty pointless at the moment. And in terms of gaming performance, this can actually beat the 3090 in select titles. They almost trade blows. So if you are building a gaming PC, even though this is not exactly great value in the first place, it is still the best value, most powerful gaming graphics card. What a mouthful. So let's grab our very powerful but not exactly great value GPU. Realize that we haven't taken the slot covers out. Then look like a bit of a wally when we then do take them out. These are proper ones too, none of that bendy business. They cancelled the bendy bus, they should cancel the bendy PCIe slot cover. Boris Johnson, make it happen. Americans have no idea what I'm talking about. Or anyone that lives up north. Or anyone that doesn't live in London. So most people. I was too busy making bendy bus jokes that I didn't actually remove the right slot. I'm not in the best form today, am I? Can I just blame the move? I am stressed, I am tired. I've got deadlines that I almost certainly won't hit. Third and final time, we line up our RTX 3080 Ti. We push it home, we secure it into place. Get this little weird alien thing out of the box that is our 12 pin adapter for the GPU. Then we can grab our PCIe power cables and bring them through to the front chamber. Connect these up. And then we should have our completely jet black interior. This isn't quite the no RGB system. Obviously we do have the display. We do have some fans on the front that hopefully should look very pretty. But I think in terms of theming, this is a brilliant looking system. And for those of you that don't want anything that is particularly over the top, I did actually film myself installing this, but even I couldn't stomach it in this build. If you want something that's a little bit more low key, a bit more traditional, I think that this Alder Lake PC has you covered. Shall we see if it works? We will of course need a monitor, and here we have the most um, out there stand. That actually really does look quite funny, doesn't it? And it spins as well. This is actually a desk clamp, because this is called the LG Ultrafine Ergo Monitor. They sent this out to me ages ago, but I seem to have uh, forgotten to use it. But its party trick is that it does actually come with this very cool weightless stand which is actually very convenient for me, isn't it? So here we go, first build in the new studio. Are we gonna get any luck? That's the LED, this is the power button. No RGB, which is a bit unusual. Change our input to display port, that will probably help. Doesn't look very promising, it is just cycling through. I was about to moan, but there's no need. Yes, boys! It looks pretty cool from the front, actually. Do remember that you can cycle through all of the different RGB settings, and if you don't want to hook it up to the case to use this button, you can just use the MSI software. If we enable our XMP profile, we will hit 5200 megahertz, which is pretty epic. Let's have a look for resizable bar support. Make sure that is enabled. Then we can boot into the Windows 11 loader. Give me some time to install some games and we'll be right back. Don't mind me, I haven't actually got a chair in this studio yet, so you're gonna have to make do with the stall. Let's begin with some Far Cry 6. RTX on, baby. And right off the bat, this looks absolutely fantastic. I've actually only played Far Cry 6 on more budget-friendly systems like 1080p with FSR. So seeing it in 4K on a monitor like this is absolutely fascinating. But the thing is, this feels super fluid because we're getting around about 90 frames a second. And bearing in mind that this is at 4K, if you wanna lower down the resolution, you're gonna get even better results. At 1440p, for instance, you can see that jumped up to around about 110, 120. Again, remember this is at the ultra preset with all of the ray tracing turned on. But of course, if it's ray tracing that actually takes your fancy, you've probably got some interest in Cyberpunk 2077. I am absolutely amazed I haven't crashed while doing this bit to camera. Oh, there's still time. Can you believe that this game has almost been out for an entire year now, yet this is still pretty much the best looking game on PC, and it is one of the most intensive. But at absolute max settings, in one of the hardest bits of the game to drive, with ray tracing enabled, DLSS set to auto at 4K, you can see we're pretty much getting that magical 60 FPS, which is allowing this game to play incredibly smoothly. Interestingly though, it doesn't seem as if our CPU temperatures and our utilization is being properly measured. I've heard of a few bugs at the moment with this whole brand new Windows 11 Alder Lake stuff. But as you can see, our CPU is currently at zero megahertz and zero degrees. 
which I don't think is right. Okay, let's go, let's go. It is raining, I've got a terrible start, but I am going to commit to it, and we've crashed a little bit, but it doesn't matter, we're just benchmarking. We're actually getting a lot better utilization now, we're around about 100% load as we have a collision with Leclerc. We're gonna do that again, much better start this time. Actually, temperatures across the board, really good. The CPU is definitely a lot lower than I thought. This is obviously 4K, so if you're running something at like 1080p, you will see higher temperatures. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter. You just want the best gaming experience possible. And I think that around about 120 frames a second at max settings 4K is gonna be the answer to your PC gaming dreams. Assuming you've got very wide pockets. Or is it deep pockets? I always get my phrases wrong. But without further ado, let's jump into everybody's favourite title, some Call of Duty Warzone. And I do believe there is a Halloween event on at the moment. Which, if you're watching this in February, isn't really very appropriate, but bear with me. And I absolutely have to say, I have never seen a frame rate this high at max settings in Call of Duty before. Remember that this is at 4K with DLSS, and you can see we're getting around about 140 frames a second. I think that's absolutely mental, because even if you do want to use one of these super fancy 4K 144Hz monitors, you're not going to have to compromise on anything. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. What do you like? What do you dislike? What do you make of this case? You can find it all linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Get yourself subscribed for loads more Order Light content. We're going to do a very deep dive very shortly. Don't you worry. A massive thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.